It's been a while. It's been a while since the last video I've made and the last time I saw you guys. And that is entirely my fault because I've been pretty busy traveling to different countries recently. Uh, in April through March, well, can't go back in time. April through May, I went through parts of Europe I've never been to before. I've only been to France before. And I went from Barcelona all the way up to Oslo, Norway. So I traveled quite extensively for that month there. And from August till basically this week, I was in Asia, specifically Korea, Japan, Taipei, Taiwan, and Bangkok. And I was in Korea because I was specifically there shooting a documentary for a really amazing chef. And I had fun the entire time. I loved every second of it. Went to Japan for about a month and a quarter, I think. A month and a week, let's say that. And was lucky enough to be able to travel from you know, Tokyo to Hokkaido to Fukuoka. A couple of different places I'd never been to before. I loved every second of that. And I went to Taipei as well, and that was absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm quite surprised by how good the food is there and how it is like the best of every Asian country that it's been a part of. It's got the best of the Chinese influence. It's got the best of the Japanese influence through the metro systems, through their sort of orderliness of everything. Parts of the city look very Japanese because Japan, face it or not, they colonized that area for about 45 years. Not really the best time in history to kind of look at that stuff, but they did take what they learned from the Japanese and applied it very well there. And I went to back to Bangkok to go see a friend of mine who was called Tequila Tom. He's a very dangerous man. Be careful. If you ever run into him, tell him I said hi. But also, never tell him when your flight is because he'll make sure you miss it. So that's what I've been up to for the past couple months. And literally, I got back on Wednesday and I'm still fighting the jet lag because I woke up today at 1.42 p.m. I originally had planned on waking up at 8 a.m. So I guess I missed that window by like, what, five hours, six hours, seven hours? I have no idea how many hours it is at this point because I can't count anymore. But the whole point of this video is that, remember a while back, I had made a video talking about Blundstones. Are they actually the best slip on pawn Chelsea boot? Specifically from Australia at the time because I compared the Blundstones to Rossi boots and Redback boots, which I thought at the time, Redback hold a very specific place because they're extremely comfortable, but the sole is kind of ridiculous on them. Rossi boots, really comfortable as well, but they're hard to break in for whatever reason. The toe on that boot is quite narrow on them. And then Blundstone, still are technically pretty good boots. Are they overpriced? Yeah, I think so, somewhat to a certain extent. If you give them for a good discount price, they're very affordable and they're good for what they are because they do last a long time. Because, for example, the leather on this specific pair of boots, which is the Ducati Scrambler edition of the, the Blundstones because you have the little cap right here for your motorcycle shifter. But these, on leather-wise, are holding up pretty well. But the problem I had with these boots was I remember walking around Tokyo uh, last year and I felt like I was scraping a pebble on the ground that was caught in my sole, and I was like, that's impossible. These soles are not chunky whatsoever, so how could something get caught in there? And lo and behold, I go to grab it out, and I'm actually grabbing it out of my shoe, where it had split right there. Um, yeah, boots are, aren't supposed to be doing that, but the reason why these particularly did that is because they have hydrolysis from the poron, uh, sole they have in here that causes the TPU outsole to kind of split um, from the moisture of your feet going in there. And this one split and the other one split. Sad part is I just got in the condition that day um, and uh, yeah, they looked great on the outside but the sole kind of sucked. So what I did was when I came back to America I reached out to Blundstone and I asked if these boots were under warranty in any way, if there's something I could do about it, right? Because first of all, I was curious if they had some sort of solution to it. Let's say get a resole or whatever it is. But what they surprised me with was something a little different. And so that leads into the point of this whole video. What is the best slip-on pull on Chelsea boot that you can actually take for one, let's say, one shoe travel if you wanted to, right? And they can be a daily wear sort of shoe that can kind of do it all. And my name's Ethan. It's been a while. I've got a cold. I've got jet lag. And I've got myself some delicious tea, so let's dive on in. So that means this is more cool shit, less bullshit. So I'm actually wearing the boots on the feet 
of what I replaced the Blundstones with. Now, I love these Blundstones a lot because I put a lot of miles on them. I have a lot of really good memories with them. So I'll never get rid of these. And so one day I'll probably resold these because I saw a few companies in Japan that resold them. Uh, one is called Radian, and there's another company called Resh. I use Resh a lot when I've been in Japan because I saw them the first time in Kyoto. If you go to the Shinkyo Goku shopping area, you walk through there, there's a little small stall where they're repairing shoes. They do a great job. I actually repaired a pair of Aldens um, that I have resold there, um, which I'm actually going to do a review on those, the Alden Indies. So stay tuned for that. So like I said, I'm wearing one of the shoes I replaced the Blundstones with on each of my feet. So I have two different types of boots, and I want to explain what's the benefit and which one's the best one of all of them. So the first one, like I said, Blundstone did something that kind of surprised me a little bit when they actually reached out back to me and said, yes, just tell us which boot you want and we'll send it to you. So I was quite surprised by that because at the same time, Blundstone had just released this boot called the All Terrain Boot. So that's all in frame there. And this is pretty cool looking boot in general. So it looks different from the original Blundstone boot because this is more of a connected heel right there. Whereas you see how this one's kind of stitched back there. So it looks a little different as far as styling goes. And even the, the sole itself looks a bit different as well. And the reason for that is because it is a Vibram outsole. So I got really excited about these because they were designed to be an all-terrain boot. So you can take this hiking, walking, doing whatever you want with them. And I basically did just that. Because when I went to Europe, um, after they sent me these, which was incredible, like I said, they didn't, didn't charge me anything for them. So apparently the first ones were under warranty. And these are pretty much the same kind of boot. The heel cup is pretty incredible on these because it has a better heel lock on them. Um, and I'm quite surprised by how good uh, the grip is on your heel because whenever I walked up hills before with the other Blundstones, every now and then I would have heel slip. But in these new ones, no slip at all. Um, the tread itself is pretty good, doesn't pick up any pebbles, it sheds pretty much everything pretty easily. Uh, these are a 9.5, which I'm a 10.5 in US boots, 10.5D, so these are a 9.5, which makes perfect sense, it's how you size them, because Australian sizes are one size smaller than American sizes. Um, and yeah, so I took these on a trip to Europe, I went to Europe from, um, I'll say it again, April to May, I was going to say April to March. I keep for some reason go back in time. I went from April to May uh, for about a month and a half throughout Europe and walked the rain, walked through all kinds of different stuff, cobblestone streets, dirt, went quad biking with these. I walked and through Venice with huge puddles because it's Venice is sinking of course. Um, got caught in the rain, pretty heavy rain and everything like that. Walked in really the hot, heat, hot humid heat of Portugal when I was in Lisbon and had no problems with these boots at all except for one simple thing. And that simple thing is actually the insole of the boots. And I don't like the original insole that came with these. I don't like them so much that I actually got rid of them entirely that I forgot what I did with the original insole. And I replaced them with uh, <laughs> Redback Boots insoles because they have really comfortable... Um, it's a bunch of gross stuff on here right now, so it's part of that. But they have a really comfortable hill cup here, um, which is really, really cushioned. And yeah, I think that makes a pretty big difference in the way these boots feel, uh, they are, like I said, they're pretty good. And I don't have any huge problems with them in general. I do question the um, overall grip of the outsole because, I mean, you're not really going for any technical hikes with these boots. It's kind of an all-around, could probably do anything. It's like a jack-of-all-trades, master of none in that scenario. I do think they're quite nice looking boots because if you like the way Blundstones look, especially the toe, because it's kind of a chunky toe, toe there, um, if you like that look of a Blundstone, it is just an honest looking boot and it works very, very well at what it does. So if you like that look, these are still great boots and I actually like them a lot. Um, so shout out to Blundstone for honestly standing by your products because I did not expect that. I kind of expected what I've had from other companies who are just like, no response. Or some sort of generic canned response of like, oh, you're outside of the warranty period for that specific boot. We're sorry, but if you'd like to purchase a new pair of boots, here's a link to be able to buy a new pair of boots. But no, Blundstone actually just replaced it just like nothing. Free shipping for everything. So Blundstone, that is incredible. 
Oh, and yes, the all-terrain boot from Blundstone, talking about prices here specifically, it costs $244.95 US dollars. $244.95 in USD. So it is kind of a pricier boot, I'll have to say for sure, um, because when we get talking about the second boot I have on, it's actually cheaper, and it punches pretty well above its weight because the reason why I got another pair of boots to replace the Blundstone with is because at around the same time, one of my favorite companies actually actually decided to uh, make a foray into a very, very good type of boot, and it was a Chelsea boot. And that company is Banner USA. And so what's so specific about this boot that's really cool besides obviously the way it looks, it does also have a Vibram sole. This is a little bit luggier of a pattern on it, so it's a little more grippy. Uh, so you can actually take this on more intensive hikes. Um, I had no issues with it because I actually did take it on some pretty good hikes when I was in Hokkaido where I was going down a pretty muddy mountain and had no slippage at all. You will pick up pebbles, uh, as you can see on the, tre the treads right there, little tiny pebbles. It's pretty easy to pick up in there. Um, and there's really not much wear, if any at all, on the uh, outsole itself. I thought there'd be more on there. I wore this pretty extensively for a few months while I was in Korea and Japan. And the reason why I specifically chose these boots to bring with me was because these actually have, as you can see here, a Gore-Tex membrane on them. So these actually have a Gore-Tex membrane, as you can see on the tag there. And so the Gore-Tex goes through the entire boot except for the, the gussets right here. It's a lot of dust. And it works very, very well. I, I like the leather of these. And the other thing that's really good about this too is there's also another tag on the inside, which I'm not sure if you can see or not. There's another tag right there that says recraftable. So these are actually resolvable boots because they actually come down with a stitch down construction right here. So not a, not a Goodyear welt, but a traditional stitch down construction where they take the leather itself from the surface and they stitch it down to the sole. And that's an easy boot to recraft. On top of that, it's more waterproof as well. So this is a very surprisingly comfortable, very lightweight, very grippy, and actually quite handsome looking boot that you can wear with about anything. Um, I will say that the one thing I don't like about them so much is I wish there was more of a separation right here so you had more of the heel lift on it. Um, that's just the way I like my heritage boots. This obviously is not a heritage design boot, but it does work pretty well for most situations where you can wear it kind of dressed up if you wanted to. But it does do a very, very, very good job with traction, tread, and comfort. These are very, very comfortable boots. I didn't have to change up the insole or anything like that. The durability is incredible. And it does hold up, without a doubt in my mind, to being 100% waterproof because I can walk through pretty substantial downpours and puddles and didn't have a single second where I felt any wetness or anything like that on my feet. And it rained a whole lot while I was in Japan and Korea. When I was in Korea, I had basically wore these for a while because it rained so much and then it started getting really cold to below zero for a while. And these honestly kept my feet very warm and they look really good. And I like the way they aged. Um, Cause the, weather, the leather on them looks kind of like a softened sort of new book, I guess. But when you get a little bit of wear patterns on it, you can see how like that's a little bit shiny right here. And the original, original leather looks a little bit rough still. So, yeah, these are incredible. They're easy to put on. They, they grip really well. Um, and the comfort is pretty stellar on these boots. And these only cost $210. These are recraftable. And $210 is a really, really fair price for a pair of boots with the Gore-Tex inside of them. And Danner is a company that does hold up very very well because they make really good quality boots and i'm pretty happy every time i put these on because they match a lot of stuff i have so um i believe they come in a different couple of different colors but i did choose the greenish sort of color uh i like the olive green color because a lot of stuff i have is olive green or neutrals so these work very very well and also this has a leather pull tab too so a little more durability kind of baked into these specific boots themselves already. So like these are quite surprising. And like I said, you don't really see too much branding on here besides the heel, the heel cup right here and right here on the side for the Vibram and then right down here at the bottom for Vibram as well. Um, so yeah, these are pretty sleek little boots. I like them a lot. They're kind of designed like sneakers, I guess is the best way to describe it. 
So they do have a lot of traction, they're very comfortable, so I have no qualms with those boots. And then on my third foot, the last boot I replaced potentially with for the Blundstone is something that's actually really hard to get because you can't even get this in America, which is really strange considering it is an American company, handmade in America. If you can guess which one this is, leave a comment below and a timestamp you kind of guessed it at because I'm curious to figure out if you knew what boot I'm about to talk about. And that is the Red Wing Rancher. Now this is a pretty hard boot to get in America because they don't sell it in America for whatever reason. This is actually, I had to buy this in Korea. Um, I kept seeing it all the time in Japan and I thought it was a very beautiful looking boot because I like, like I said, I love Chelsea boots because you can kind of slip them on and off very easily. And especially in Asia where you have to take your shoes off coming inside, which honestly, PSA, you should probably be taking your shoes off when you go inside because if you think about it, how gross it actually is. Even right now when I'm handling these boots, I'm thinking about how disgusting it actually is to me, for me to touch the sole because as a guy, I'm sure you've been to a public restroom of any kind throughout your entire life. And if you go up to the urinal and you look down before you get to the urinal, it's basically just a whole free-for-all. Everyone's basically shot on the ground somehow. And I usually have to kind of spread my feet pretty wide like a gymnast to be able to get to the urinal and avoid this huge gross puddle of stuff on the ground. And I think about it when I come home that that's on my feet. You don't think about it all the time, but you realize you're walking through a lot of crap throughout your entire day, so you probably shouldn't wear your shoes inside the house. So in many ways, a Chelsea boot is the best boot to have because you slip it on, slip it off, and do whatever you want with them. That PSA out of the way, these boots are quite incredible because they're, obviously, like I said, made in America, um, very beautifully done as well. Like these are quite a stellar example of what an American boot can look like or what a very simple Chelsea boot can look like. They have kind of the bulbous toe, kind of like how the um, typical work boots usually have, so that way it gives you room for your feet to swell, which is quite nice because um, if you walk around a lot or stand on your feet all day, your feet do swell quite a bit, and so that kind of counteracts for it. So some people like that look, some people don't like that look, because you can see right here, it's quite a, quite a sort of look on it. If you've ever wore a pair of Red Wings before, like say an Iron Ranger, it's kind of the same construction style as that, except for these have the split heel on them, which I think is quite pretty as well, because that just looks really more traditional on them. Uh, it's got a vibrant sole with mini lugs. It's got the, you know, sort of stitch going around all the outsole right there. So it's a very beautiful looking boot. It's got a nice heel stack on the back right here. Um, it's got one single pull tab with the Red Wing logo on there. It says Red Wing Shoes, Red Wing Shoes on both sides. And that is quite the beautiful look on them. The model number specifically for these is a... The tag isn't worn out. Actually, yeah, I guess the tag is worn out on that. So I can't really see the model number. Um, I think it's 2918. Yeah, I think it's model number 2019, which I mean, look colloquially, I must just call it by its name, is the Rancher. Um, I'm assuming it's based on the idea of, you know, Australia would have a boot like this, kind of like the R.M. Williams boot or even this Blundstones. But if you want to go for more heritage style boots, these are really comfortable. Uh, I wore these quite a bit when I was around in Korea last year and I had no issues with them. And they were comfortable the whole time. I did rain quite a bit and I didn't have any issues with uh, rain getting into them. I did put mink oil on them, so that's probably a reason why. And I like the contrast stitching on them. That's quite beautiful there as well. It's quite a beautiful style way to lead off of there. They are a little heavy, so like if you wanted to wear these as one boot for travel, you kind of have to be in a place where you don't really have to worry about multi-seasons, because that's usually what I deal with whenever I go to Asia. Um, it's pretty annoying because I go from August, which is one of the hottest months of the entire year for them, where it's super humid, really, really hot, rains a little bit here and now and then, then to September, still pretty hot, and then roughly in November it transitions to the fall for a few weeks in Korea specifically. Japan kind of keeps going back and forth between hot and cold during the month of November. And then, um, or I guess October, I skipped October completely. But it gets pretty hot and cold in October. Same thing in November, it gets pretty hot. 
and then eventually in December, it just gets really, really cold. So it's really hard for me to pack for these multi-seasons. And it'd be really hard to wear a pair of just, you know, regular straight up um, heritage style boots because it's actually really hard to wear heritage stuff when you travel because yeah, it's pretty heavy. Like even this Carhartt jacket I'm wearing right now, it would be a hard thing to travel with because if you're going multi-seasons, it is not something you can pack down quite easily like you can with a modern piece of clothing, like let's say a Patagonia puffer or something. So I always take these things into consideration between what I will actually bring with me when I travel. Um, and on this trip specifically to Asia, I decided to bring these Danner boots because I wanted something that's 100% waterproof, pretty comfy, um, had really good grip so I could take it hiking if I needed to, and could kind of work with more casual or maybe possibly more dress up stuff. Because if you look at it from the top, you don't really see too much of the treading, so you don't think too much about them. They're pretty simple, sleek looking boots. <sighs> so I said all that, and actually the Red Wing boots, I don't remember how much I paid for these. I would have to say these probably about $300, something like that. These must have been about $300. Bucks. Um, that's just kind of what Red Wings cost, and it makes sense for something handmade in America. So that price point makes sense. They're also something you can't buy in America, so that's another thing to consider if you ever see them, um, if you want that type of boot. I think they sell them in Europe. I think they do sell them in Europe. I think I heard about Amsterdam having them. I might have saw them there um, when I was there in Europe. But, yeah, those are great boots. So these are all three great Chelsea boots, which are very worthy to replace the original Blundstones that got destroyed. So now I guess it's time for the tea. Which boot would I choose if I just needed one shoe to do everything? So I showed off the three different boots. One is a Blundstone, which like I said is more of a, it's more like a city boot that kind of does a little bit of stuff off-road. I guess it's like what the, the Pace Picante commercials was like, what is that city sliver doing in the country? Mainly for sidewalks, flat surfaces. It can do things off-road. Yeah, it can. Does it do very well? It depends, because it won't be able to do loose surfaces pretty well, like dirty, dusty areas. It can't handle that very, very well. Muddy areas, I mean, you could, but then you have to clean these things off, and they're not 100% waterproof. They're only as good as the wax you put on them, or oil, or whatever you put in on the leather. Um, so eventually that will seep through. So if you want a boot that is good at being a city boot, but also like kind of more rugged looking, Bond Stones are a pretty great choice. Um, and then if you go with these Danner boots, these are pretty incredible. Like at the price point, Gore-Tex inside, very comfortable stitch down construction so it's resolvable by pretty much anybody the cushioning of the midsole and outsole is quite quite comfy the outsole is very very durable and it does have a lot of grip um, it's just a good looking boot that has triple stitch construction here double stitch construction here double stitch construction there um, and double stitch construction here on the pull tab so like that leather pull tab is not going to go anywhere they're comfy, Gore-Tex, great, 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 great. And then the Red Wing boots, if you want something that is more traditional looking, that is more of a heritage boot, it is heavier, it's hard to pack, it's got to still shank, so you do have to take off your boot when you walk through a metal detector at the airport, so that can be annoying. But they are Chelsea boots, so they're easy to slip on, easy to slip off, no laces involved. They are great boots, I have no qualms with them. They are a higher price point they are handmade in America so like it really depends which avenue you're going for but like I said the T is which boot would I just buy if I was only gonna buy one of these boots to travel around the world with the Danner Tramline boots it is just a really good price point. You're getting a good quality boot out of it. The leather's pretty comfortable. Forms your foot within about a week. I want a lot of miles in them. Had no issues with any of that. Pretty comfy the entire time. Feels the comfort of a sneaker, the durability of a boot, married with the Gore-Tex membrane, 
it's kind of a no-brainer because if you want to be part of any sort of extreme condition, those boots can handle it. They're able to do so much at a very affordable price point and really just knock it out of the park. So Danner, you've done an excellent job. You're no stranger to Gore-Tex, you're no stranger to boots, so you've done a very, very good job. I guess that kind of concludes it for the this edition of the triple attack of the Chelsea boot shootout. So eventually one of these boots might wear out and I'll probably have something different to say about it. But so far, pretty impressed with all three different choices I have here. But like I said, if you're gonna choose one for everything, the Danner tram line is pretty much the ultimate choice for the boot. It's quite comfy, pretty awesome. I'm happy with that, so yeah. So since I'm wearing my bourbon waxed canvas hat that looks like Barber, but it says bourbon from Kentucky, because yes, I am from Kentucky. And when I went back, I bought a lot of whiskey and I bought this lovely hat. So since all that's happening at the same time, that means this is the end of another episode of More Cool Shit, Less Bullshit, where I like to make sure that you do not spend your hard-earned money on trash, garbage from shit lands and just waste your time and it's pointless. Let me do that for you. Because I, for some reason, am extremely fascinated with ways to make things better. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit a comment if you have any questions. And definitely hit that notification button because I like to make these videos for you. Absolutely free because I think we pay enough just to be alive at this point. So why pay to make videos and content? Pfft, that's stupid. I'm giving you information so you don't waste your time, money, and energy and effort just looking for crap that just doesn't work. I already found it. I think it's pretty good. So, until next time, 